feet on edge. Down a little bit, Mari. And then what you're gonna do is open it up. Open the, open the, yep. And then arms back at, and you're happy to get information. Yep, got it. Now, Red McDaniel interview, take one. Great, here you go. Perfect. Okay, so Red, uh, you had some lines that were important to you, and I think fantastic, and you talked about fear and faith. Can you say that, sir? I learned in doing uh, extreme torture in Vietnam in 1969 that courage is not the absence of fear because I was very much afraid. Courage is simply the presence of faith, the one thing the enemy can't take. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. And Mike, you had a line that I would uh, tell a thing about dancing in the rain. You know, and storms come in all of our lives. Uh, we lost a grandchild, uh, there are divorces, uh, all kind of problems, and it, it comes into all of our lives. But when the storms come, we shouldn't wait for the storms to pass. We should learn how to dance in the rain. And that's how I described our captivity. We just picked up the pieces and while away the time and tried to, something that we could do in five minutes would take several hours because we had nothing but time. And uh, humor played a big role in that too, wasn't it? Humor. Absolutely. Uh, we as Americans uh, have a sense of humor and no matter how desperate the situation is, you can rise above it for a few seconds by laughing about it. Fantastic. And then you had a line. I would also use the, uh, about the, uh, the one POW describing the Italian. Yes. Uh, one POW described faith as having a rope and tying a knot in and hanging on, in his case, for seven years. Okay, but you should make a memory, the one that you want to say about, you can't take 2,118 days in one fell swoop, you gotta take it one day at a time. Yes. Had you tried to take it all in one fell swoop, you couldn't have. Yes. Uh, if I, I tie, tie that into the rope of faith part of it. If I had taken... You might, you know. I'm sorry, Red, but you might start that off by saying, I was held in captivity for 2,100, because that's a nice beginning. I was held in captivity for 2,118 days. And had, had I... Sorry, say that again. <coughs> please say about the uh, one POW described. Okay, okay. The rope. But I'll start off with the 2,118 days. I was in captivity for 2,118 days. And if I'd taken 2,118 days in one fell swoop, I could not have handled it. Either take it one day at a time. And one of our POWs said it's like taking a rope, tying a knot in, and hanging on, in his case, for seven years. And that's a very descriptive term. Beautiful. And I would uh, use your, uh, your Hebrews faith. Give the definition of faith in Hebrews. Faith is being oh, sure. Yes. I wrote it out for you. Yeah, good. <coughs> Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you cannot see. Think of that. that okay. Thing. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of that which you do not see. Say it one more time. Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you can't see. And being certain of what we can't Faith is uh, Faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you cannot see. All right, so uh, you have some more? So we want to get some lines about, um, what was the quote? Uh, can you ask Terry to come up? Uh, freedom is never so sweet. It's Something that goes on, freedom has a ring to those of us who have lost it, that the that something we'll yes. never know, yeah. We'll never know. Never yeah, yeah. That the, I don't know what the term is, but. Terry, do you remember the quote, freedom has a taste to those who have lost it? Is, I think Mark sent us the quote. Oh, okay. I can look it up. Okay, go ahead and look it up. All right, so we'll uh, move on while Terry tries to find it. Okay. Quote. Um, that is, that's a good quote. Yeah. The, uh, 
recently you've visited the Marine Museum at Quantico with your friend Bob Shoemaker. There's, you shared years of imprisonment. What did it mean for you to just be able to walk around and see and celebrate, you know, Marine, the Marine history, or even just celebrate life in a, in a museum with a friend? And just that simple act is, like for many of us, we don't understand how big that is. So speak something about how freedom is for Well, you think back to the years that I was there, in my case, six years, and Bob Shoemaker, eight years. You know, it's living in a total vacuum. In a, in a drab prison, uh, no color, n no furniture, just uh, and to, to be able to come home after all these years and to walk into a museum with, with all the memories of Vietnam and previous wars and all the aircraft, it was a great thrill for me and I'm sure it was for Bob. And so what does it mean that you can just one day decide get in your car and go visit a museum with a friend. Like, just that, that alone. Well, you, th you think back into those uh, 2,118 days when you couldn't do that. And I, I used to tell myself in captivity, if I could get home for one week, I'd be ready to pass on, to die, just to be free for seven days. But now I've been back uh, 46 plus years and uh, still hope for more. Beautiful. Um, and let's say something a bit about just being able to uh, walk along the water with your son on a Sunday afternoon and, and talk about life together. What, what does that mean to you? Well, it's very special to me because my if, family has a closeness. If, if you, I'm sorry, because I'm, my voice won't be part okay. of the thing, if you could repeat the question as part of your answer. Like, for me, it's very special to be able to walk with my son, for instance, and just have a... Well, this morning to walk along the water with my son, Mike, it's very special because it reminds me of the closeness of my family and thinking of my wife, Dorothy, who waited seven years for me, a year of combat, six years as a prisoner of war, three years missing, but kept our family of three children together all those years. And com coming with that is an inner strength that our family has that we treasure even today. And were there nights or days in the Hanoi prison systems where you didn't ever know if you would see your son again and now to be able to... I was a perennial optimist. And uh, when men would get down in spirit, they'd tap down the walls to me because they wanted to hear something good. they say, Red, when are we going to go home? And I would say, two months. Time after time, two months. Well, in six years, I lost a lot of credibility, but that's what they wanted to hear. And that kept me going because that came from being an athlete. I think to win... You've got to think you can win. And as a prisoner of war, you've got to think that someday you're going to be out of this place. And sure enough. And uh, say something to the effect of sometimes I like to go down and sit on the edge of the Potomac with my son and just talk and watch over the water. So, something that simple. Well, I think through the years uh, that I've been home, uh, being with my children, my boys and my daughter Leslie uh, going down and sitting on the river banks and then with the grandkids. I've had all my grandkids, I've taught them how to fish and uh, we'd go down and uh, put a hook in the water and catch a fish and, and that's been a great great thrill to me through the years and I still uh, my, treasure my family above all else. Cutting. Um, oh, you thought it was something.